morning. Hi, it's your teacher calling. I don't know how to say goodbye. <laughs> Some things, they're not just pretty bows for. Hey. Okay, y'all, you're about to go on a journey with me as we process all that the past four years has brought me. This is quite a full video. There's a lot happening in it. And there's a lot happening in me. So let's get into it. <laughs> the disbelief that I felt when Erica picked this house and it happened to be in Mineral Bluff. I didn't find the house, I didn't send it to her, I didn't suggest it to her. She found this house and the whole thing happened. August of 2020, the first week I started on the river, Tacoa River, at a house in Mineral Bluff. I fell in love. It was so magical. The geese, the beavers, the way the mist was there in the morning and the night, watching the dam make the creek or the river rise and fall and people floating down. And I was obsessed. So imagine my surprise when two days after I get home, I find out I have to move. I pitched this whole idea to Erica and within two months, she's picked us a house in that place that I fell in love. And I even said to the river, why do I feel like I should live here if I'm supposed to make it happen? And so this has felt as if this was supposed to be my forever home. Felt like I manifested it. It was maybe one of the first times where I was like, whoa, did I speak that into reality? Because I genuinely asked the full moon, can I please live here? And if so, figure out how. And here I am. I'm not sure how to process leaving because I thought this was it. This was the dream house. This was the dream life. This is what I manifested. How is it now that I think I'm not supposed to be here? I knew this man was calling me here for a purpose. I knew there was a reason I was supposed to be here and I knew there was gonna be healing to happen. But I also knew, but I didn't want to admit it yet, it wasn't forever. I knew within the first six months, I was like, oh, okay, this is an impermanent situation. And perhaps it's because I got so used to taking care of Steve and just living in that impermanence that I thought maybe this is just me understanding the reality that life in and of itself is impermanent. And there is no way to guarantee a forever. So I didn't really read too much into it until the call got louder and louder. And there was no denying this was no longer supposed to be where we lived. I grew up with a view very similar to this. It was my favorite childhood home. We lived there for a very brief time while my mom was married to my stepdad. That was a very two years maybe of our life and it was when I actually wow. realized that nature was where I found healing. Nature held me. I would sit in this apple tree looking at a view just like this that would be painted whatever color of the season just like this and when I moved back here the first time I heard the whippoorwill I cried because I said oh my gosh I've returned to my childhood dream. The place that I've always thought was where I would be forever. And it's why there's so many weird feelings about leaving. Because I know I'm not supposed to be here right now. I know it. I know it as much as I know my name is Hope. But how is that possible? So to say that the whole process of leaving has been overwhelming is an understatement. It's okay. 
I am feeling way too overwhelmed by all this stuff. I need to take a break. I need to go to the river. Getting to have spaciousness and access to nature outside my doorstep to the point where I could literally just take a walk on my land or if I need something bigger I can get in my car and drive five minutes and be at the river. I can drive 20 minutes and be at a hike. It has gifted me with the ability to understand the stillness that I needed to sit in to process how much happened while I was taking care of Steve. And I genuinely believe that if I didn't have this, I would still be feeling sick and stuck and broken from everything I went through. I was talking to a friend yesterday and I met him in my early days of living here. And he was a huge part of my healing and my transition back into being a therapist. He is in fact one of the most influential in, in, that, in that area because when I was sort of lost and floundering, he was my sounding board at the moment and just was a really beautiful mirror as to the fact that I was naturally already existing in that space that is therapist for everyone in my life. And so he said, if this is just who you are naturally, why not consider going back to the career you had started before you left to take care of Steve? And he seeing it in me whenever I felt lost and didn't really see much uh, possibility in me at that moment was a gift. And it was something that I, I forever will be thankful for him for. And to come full circle and to kind of catch up with him yesterday, now thinking about leaving this land and this place, uh, he reminded me that I was once very pliable when I first moved here because I was so lost and in transition and trying to find myself, I was very easily influenced by my surroundings. And sometimes that was a positive thing and sometimes that was a negative thing. And it was really easy for me to get caught up in everything and everyone else around me. And something that I can say that I've learned from these four years is that I no longer exist in that space. I know who I am and I operate in my energy. To be able to no longer be so easily swayed into everyone else's energy and everyone else's world it has allowed me to operate in my own energy and know what my value system is and what my intent is for the world and where do I want my attention to go and where do I want my energy to go. And I will say that might be one of the most valuable takeaways I have from this experience is learning how to recognize what's mine, own what's mine, and stay in what's mine. But there are moments of stopping and looking back and being able to say, wow, look where I was a year ago. Look where I was two years ago. Look where I was four years ago when I first moved here to look where I am now as I'm leaving this place. Being able to stop and live in that, wow, I have done so much growth and healing. It's gonna be hard not to be able to come sit here with Marlo. Are you sad that she's buried and not cremated that you could take her with you? I mean, no, because she loved it here, and you know how much this was her bench. Yeah. Every time we went on a walk, this is where she wanted to sit afterwards, That's and true. she loved this land, so it seems perfect that she'd be here. Yep. Yeah.
For Steve, Steve's earned. <coughs> so is that a thing people have to think about? How do you move your husband without him spilling? You're gonna tape him. Yes, we're gonna put blue tape to tape it closed, because the blue tape, the um, blue painters tape won't stick to it. Okay. And then put it in the box. And we'll anchor it and know that that box can't be turned upside down. And then how are you going to get it back to me? When you move, you get a new house. You're just going to drive it to me. I'm going to bring it to you, yeah. You're going to drive me Steve. I'm not shipping them. While I was taking care of Steve, I had to face a lot of my shadow side. And, you know, a lot of anger came up inside of me during my caregiving days. And... Some of it, most of it, actually was understandable and justifiable anger. Anger in and of itself wasn't the problem. It was that for my entire life, I have seen anger as bad, having uh, witnessed my dad's anger and just kind of internalizing, ooh, angry is bad, let's not feel bad. And when I finally had it all come up because I was literally in a pressure cooker, I became the lightning that would strike your house and burn it down. And I had no idea what to do with that because normally I am the sunshine that warms your soul and makes everyone feel like rainbows can exist inside everyone's being. Like I literally was always a ray of light. So when all of a sudden I was the lightning and I was striking people's houses and catching them on fire, I hope everyone knows that's like a metaphor. Anyways. It was really hard for me to come to terms with and I also had to understand how to allow myself to feel anger and learn healthy ways to feel it instead of the lightning and it was quite a journey and it was one of the biggest most important lessons that I learned while taking care of Steve is that anger is sacred all of our feelings are sacred they're all valid there's no such thing as bad feelings and learning how to sit in them and be with them and process them and regulate them. It's one of the biggest things we can ever do in our lives. And when I got here, I was surprised at how much shame came back because I worked through a lot of that while I was taking care of Steve because I got into a healthier place with my anger and he got into a healthier place with his anger. And he and I in the biggest depths of ALS nonsense, figured out a way to feel our feelings without lashing them out on each other, which was huge, which is why it was a big surprise for me when I got here and I all of a sudden was like, I'm a monster and I don't deserve anything good to happen to me. And somehow I landed in this magical place and I don't really deserve it. And the shame came up and I felt so lost and I had absolutely no idea how I was ever going to find peace, purpose, passion again. Like I genuinely... Like I was trying to do all these things. I was trying to be an artist, which I still to this day identify as an artist. Making art is one of my biggest self-care practices. It's one of my favorite ways to be a creative. And I do it in a much more playful way. But at the time I was like, I don't know what career I'm supposed to be doing. So let me try to make money with my art. Selling my art nearly like snapped me in that fragile state that I was in because I was already feeling anxious and lost and like when people weren't buying my art it made me feel not good enough and then yeah I was in a world of just chaos and to be where I'm at now four years later where I feel at peace I feel so for sure of my purpose I feel so for sure following a path that I have no idea where it's taking me and I'm just like I'm gonna figure it out I figured this out I I'm lost at words, which is hard for me because I am full of words, but it's hard to be able to verbalize how much it means to me that I can look back four years ago and say, I had no idea that I would be where I am today. I am so thankful. It took me showing up in those lost moments and learning to love myself in it learning to forgive myself for any shame that I was carrying, 
learning to feel all my feelings, learn to sit in them and not escape them, learn to process them and, and transmute them. You know, that's part of what art is for me now is it's what it was for me as a caregiver. I just didn't know that. <laughs> I had no idea that's what I was actually doing. I can go from where I was four years ago just feeling like, what is the point? Every morning I woke up to now feeling so full of purpose and so for sure that I am supposed to be on this path. As I'm closing this whole four years out, my biggest gratitude and takeaway is that healing is possible and I couldn't feel more thankful for it and I couldn't feel more prepared to help give it to other people. There's a lot that really goes into being able to fully process and integrate and understand and digest what all went into this four-year cycle I am coming to close. There's a lot of ways in which I think I will understand more when I'm not in this space. And because I have allowed so much time to just sit in this existence and soak in the last bits of the medicine that I feel like this land has just been freely giving me, I know there's going to be more to come. I know there's going to be more to understand. I know there's going to be more epiphanies and more clarity. And especially because this is, this is a, a big ending that is going to free up some things for me in terms of energy and in terms of time. And it's going to be a, a total refocus. And I know that just as I am going to be having the clarity as to where I'm landing next, I'm going to be given a lot of clarity about more lessons from here. And so don't be surprised if a month or two after I move, I'm back talking about this property because there is so much that has happened and so much energy wrapped up into it that once that is freed up, things are just going to start snowballing in the best way possible. And I'm ready for it. And I'm here for it. And y'all are here for it. And... As things continue to come up for me, I will come share because I believe that sharing my process has brought a lot of healing to me, just saying it out loud and being able to have a space to process it. But a lot of the feedback I get is that it's very healing to y'all too. And so I'm glad we're in this journey together. I'm glad we all have each other. And in a weird, weird world where we're connecting via our phones, and a lot of you I do know in real life, it's just, I feel so incredibly thankful for the connections and for the way in which this space has allowed me to get to where I'm at today, which feels like a very good, ready, happy, fulfilled, thankful, excited place. It's all happening. It's all happening. It's all happening. It's been my mantra for the year. And anytime I either got overwhelmed or excited, I'd be like, well, it's all happening. <laughs> so we're about to see that. Thank you, Hope Homestead. Thank you.